Somewhere in Paris, we see two individuals sitting on a bed in an apartment building. One is an elderly gentleman and the other is a companion. The elderly man shares a regretful confession about his past, explaining how he ended up in prison due to taking advantage of his own daughter. However, he now deeply regrets his actions, realizing the importance of his daughter in his life. His companion offers comforting words, assuring him that everyone makes mistakes and that there are no inherently bad deeds. Following this conversation, the men complain about how loud the nearby gay club is and express their discontent. The camera then shifts out of the window, revealing a gay bar named The Rectum. Shortly, the police arrive and bring out a man named Marcus on a stretcher, who's clearly injured from some kind of altercation. People around him can be seen yelling and cursing. Meanwhile, another man named Pierre is handcuffed and apprehended by the police for murder. In a flashback, we see Marcus and Pierre arriving at the rectum. Marcus is consumed by anger, desperately searching for a man named Latenia. Pierre tries to reason with him, pointing out that seeking revenge in such a violent manner is not justified, even among animals. Ignoring Pierre's advice, Marcus continues to aggressively confront the men at the gay bar, demanding information about Latenia. But in response, they ask him to pleasure them in exchange for the desired information. After talking to different people, they find a young man who knows Latenia, although he warns them about Latenia's dangerous nature. Marcus, however, remains unfazed and requests the young man to take him to Latenia. In return, the young man asks Marcus to please him first. In a fit of rage, Marcus beats him until he reveals Latenia's whereabouts. Next, there are two men present and Marcus tries to identify the correct one. Suddenly, one of them starts to walk away. Mistakenly assuming that he's Latenia, Marcus engages in a fight with him. But the real Latenia observes with a smile as Marcus inflicts violence on the wrong person. During the altercation, the man injures Marcus, breaks his hands and attempts to mistreat him. But just then, Pierre appears with a fire extinguisher and brutally strikes the man's face until it caves in. Throughout this, Latenia watches with delight, finding pleasure in the violence and the futile efforts made to apprehend the wrong person. The scene then shifts back to some time ago when Marcus and Pierre enter a restaurant to inquire about the location of the rectum. However, the guy in the restaurant claims that he'll only share Marcus the location if he's a gay man. Hearing this, Marcus becomes enraged and tries to attack the man, but Pierre stops him and gets him out. As they return to the taxi, Pierre gives up and declares that he's not going any further. However, Marcus, who's infuriated, grabs a metal rod and begins bashing the taxi, forcing Pierre to accompany him. At that point, it's revealed that Marcus's girlfriend, Alex, has just been brutally beaten by a man named Latenia some time ago. Therefore, Marcus is now frantically looking for him to take revenge. Moving back further in time, Marcus and Pierre call a taxi and ask the driver to take them to the rectum. However, the cab driver is unfamiliar with the area and requests them to point it out on a map. But the short-tempered Marcus gets furious with his response and calls the driver slit eyes since he's an Asian man. Immediately, the driver becomes enraged and orders the two to get out of his cab, threatening to call the police. Pierre then urges Marcus to stop his erratic behavior and to go to the hospital to visit Alex. However, Marcus drags the driver out and beats him up. He then pepper sprays his eyes and drives away in the cab with Pierre. The scene then shifts to some time ago when Pierre and Marcus are walking down the street. They're also being helped by two street thugs named Moraud and Laid to catch the perpetrator. Several prostitutes are standing on street corners and Marcus goes around asking for someone named Guillermo Nunez. They soon come across Concha, a transsexual prostitute whose real name is Guillermo Nunez. Marcus then starts hitting her and asks her about the man who mistreated Alex. Eventually, Concha admits that a man named Latenia did it and mentions that they might find him in the gay club called The Rectum. Meanwhile, Pierre is trying to stop Marcus from hitting Concha and yells at him that while they're out on the street seeking vengeance, Alex is all alone in the hospital. He wants to leave and be with Alex, but Marcus doesn't listen and continues on. Just then, the entire transsexual streetwalker group rushes to Concha's help. Seeing this, Marcus and Pierre are compelled to flee in a cab and are separated from Morad and Laid. Moving to some time ago, a detective is seen questioning Pierre and Marcus about Alex's incident. The three of them had gone to a party together, and now Alex is discovered in a terrible state. When asked if Alex had used drugs, Pierre flatly denies it. After the cops take their contacts, Murad and Laid arrive and offer help to Marcus and Pierre. They claim that the cops will do nothing even if they find the criminal. They'll just catch the perpetrator and place him in prison, where he'll be cared for and fed. So, in exchange for money, they offer their help in locating the perpetrator as they're familiar with the territory. 
They claim to have previously located and punished a culprit who took advantage of a woman. They then reveal that cops discovered a handbag with the ID of Guillermo Nunez near the crime scene, which is a start. Pierre refuses to go with them, but Marcus accepts the offer after some hesitation. In another flashback, we see Pierre and Marcus leaving a party. Marcus is accusing Pierre of ruining the party when he notices Alex being carried away on a stretcher. She has been severely beaten and is unconscious. Immediately, Marcus bursts into tears as he learns that his girlfriend was brutally mistreated and is now in a coma. Continuing to rewind, we see Alex leaving the party to go down the street looking for a taxi, but no one stops. Just then, a woman by her side suggests she take the underground tunnel instead. Alex then goes into the tunnel, where she notices Latenia viciously beating up Concha. The man is a bisexual, predominantly gay pimp who enjoys a variety of sadomasochistic physical delights. When Latenia's eyes fall on Alex, he lets go of Concha and grabs her instead. He then pushes her to the ground and savagely mistreats her while holding a knife to her throat. As he aggressively gropes her, Latenia notices that the poor woman is bleeding excessively and starts getting angry. When he's finished, Alex tries to leave, but Latenia claims that he isn't done with her yet. He then vigorously steps on her face and hits her multiple times. Following that, Latenia relentlessly smashes her face into the ground until she's unconscious. We then move back to time when Marcus and Pierre are in an elevator. Marcus complains about how boring Pierre is and thinks he really needs a woman in his life, so he decides to chat with two girls and ask them to take care of his friend. However, Pierre becomes enraged and storms away, saying that he doesn't require any of that. Marcus is clearly high on drugs, as are the other women. He then starts making out with them, but Pierre stops him, saying they'll all regret it when they sober up. He prevents Marcus from cheating on Alex and urges him to be with her instead of all these women. But on the other hand, Marcus keeps fooling around and continues flirting with other girls in front of Alex. Naturally, this enrages Alex and she scolds him for taking drugs and acting ridiculously. Marcus tries to get close to her, but the furious Alex screams at him not to touch her and walks downstairs. As she tries to leave, she meets Pierre who asks her why she's with an idiot like Marcus. However, Alex tells him not to be bothered about Marcus and to enjoy the party. Pierre then asks her not to leave since he'll be stuck there with Marcus. But Alex says she really needs to go. He then offers to take her back home, but Alex swiftly refuses and leaves on her own. Now let's go back to a couple of hours earlier, where we see Alex, Pierre and Marcus heading toward the party. Alex informs them that she's now reading a book that claims the future has already been written and that the proof is in the dreams. Then it's revealed that Pierre is her ex-boyfriend and currently she's dating Marcus. As the three head to the subway, Pierre asks Alex if he was excellent in bed when they were together, but Alex just laughs it off. Pierre believes she left him because she wasn't satisfied with him in bed, so he continues to seek an explanation for what she sees in Marcus that's so special. He seems to be still in love with her and regrets not being with her. But Alex refuses to discuss it, and all she says is that Pierre is too academic about intimacy and never lives in the moment. She claims that he's solely concerned with the other person's pleasure and that he loses sight of what really counts in his efforts to make everything perfect. In the next scene, we see Alex and Marcus sleeping after their lovemaking session. Just then, they receive a message from Pierre informing them that they won't be able to go to the party in his car since it broke down. Pierre tells them to hurry up since they need to catch the metro in 30 minutes. Then Alex gets up and tells Marcus that she had a bizarre dream in which she saw a red tunnel that suddenly split in two. She assumes it's because she's been late for her period. The two then talk about the party, and Marcus is annoyed at having to spend an evening with Alex's ex-boyfriend, Pierre. However, he promises Alex to be good to Pierre, even though he technically stole his girl. However, Alex claims that he didn't steal anyone and that she's not an object to be stolen. She made the decision to be with them, and it was all up to her. The two then begin playing music and dancing. Alex then asks Marcus what he'd do if she were pregnant, and he replies it would be fun. Marcus then goes to get a bottle of wine, while Alex takes a shower. Later, she opens a shelf and retrieves a box to take the pregnancy test. The test turns out to be positive, and Alex appears quite delighted and excited. In the final scene, which is a flashback to a day earlier, Alex is seen laying at the park, reading a book while children are playing nearby. She's completely unaware of her approaching doom. And as the movie ends, we see a quote that reads, Time ruins everything.